Hey guys, it's Joe Barisi here. Thanks for tuning in. I'd like to talk a little bit about guitars. My approach in general is pretty simple. For the most part, things are a little bit separated. There are some clean guitars at the front of this track. I'll, I'll give you a quick example of these. There's also, while that's happening, there's this 12 string part. It's just kind of harmonic y. So at this point in the song, I wanted a swell to come into where the heavy guitars really start. So I processed some of the cymbals with Metaflanger. And at the same time, did a couple of guitar swells here. And I did a little automation on the main guitars. You see there's a VCA right here on these two main guitar tracks, and I just kind of ducked it out of there, so together. And that's sort of what that transition sounds like. The, the bulk of these guitars are these main guitar tracks. I'll play the intro as well so we can hear sort of how it builds from this kind of fading up of the drums. Notice there's a ghetto fade going on right here, just kind of built in. And uh, the dirty amp comes in a little bit later, so it's not so abrasive. The clean guitar start, there's the swells and the metaflanger on the cymbals, and this kind of noisy 12-string uh, part, so. You get the idea. I, I probably would have done a master fader ride at that point too, just to make the front really kick in or pull the very intro back even further and push it up with the swells. You can get a little bit of more upfront thing happening when you get the compressors in. If I didn't have the console, here's where I'd be doing it. Always the threshold buried, fast release, and just a little bit of ratio to taste. And here's what it'll sound like. Also got a little bit of EQ happening here. They're pretty crunchy already, but I don't mind it in this track. It gives you some kind of squishiness. I'm just gonna go through really quick and, and for the most part, I'm gonna take out some low. What I really like about the SSL EQ is you can change the sound from almost a, I would say more normal British-y sound to a scooped, you know, almost Mesa sound instantly by just picking mid-range frequencies. So in this case, I'm looking to try to get a little more low end out of this and the wide bandwidth isn't helping me. So at this point, I'm gonna start narrowing.
most people would tend to favor a narrower bandwidth here, but to me, this just makes it fuller sounding and that kind of melds the guitar into the bass. I always do an enforcer track, the Clint Eastwood track, and this is our extra guitar track. You can hear it's kind of filtered sounding, so yeah. when you play it against the main guitars, There's where the beef's coming from. It's not a beefy sound. It's not even a very good sound, but together it works. It's probably just a half-cocked wah-wah pulled back a little. So there's less top end and a little more woof happening. So that's something that I would do in tracking, but if I was mixing this and this needed some guts, I would EQ this guitar differently. And you know, the SSL can be very broad, almost like a Paul Tech or a Neve style with the wide bandwidth, but it gets very surgical at the same time. So if I wanted to focus this guitar sound, like I was sort of sweeping the mids on the SSL channel, you can really go from one gamut to another on the guitars. What I like doing on guitars is also a parallel distortion quite a bit. So what I'm doing, something I did a long, long time ago when I was mixing a Sick of It All record, and the guitars coming back off a of tape needed a little extra guts. So. Um, a little extra sustain and compression really wasn't really cutting it, it was making it too mushy. So basically taking the two guitars off of tape and back then kind of pumping the two guitars into two tube screamers and bringing the two tube screamers back through mic pre's, choice of mic pre again, fatter sound, Neve, more of a transient attack API. And then I would blend those in. And that's something you can do here. I, I can just demo it real quick here, what I've got going on. And I'm just gonna push up these two small faders and that's gonna go into my parallel distortion. And basically I'm just overdriving mic pre's at this point. I'll just solo up the return only. So depending on where I set the mic pre, I can really kind of gain. I'm not, I'm not looking for any more dirt. This is a dirty track. Odds are I wouldn't even use this on this track. Or to make the chorus jump even more, I would only turn up the returns of the parallel distortion in the choruses to make it go one extra dimension. Because where do you go from there? No way. The way you can emulate it in the box is obviously just using some kind of parallel mic pre chain or you know, GTR is one of those things too that just, it just never fails. So I personally, you know, to keep face coherency in the box better, I would probably just mult the guitar tracks, put the plugin on it and turn those plugins on and off and just in those sections and as a parallel, just blend it in. The concept of parallel distortion, just like we were parallel compressing the drum kit, parallel distortion on guitars, just to make them a little more up front is sort of where I would, I always have it going. Do I use it all the time? Not all the time. And sometimes it's sections only. In this particular track, there are a couple other guitar parts happening in this middle section. I'm a huge fan of making stuff outside the speakers. And one of the first things I discovered that does it is the S1 Imager. So I, I love doing things with this plugin where I'll automate this with and make a guitar or a vocal or a return of a reverb or whatever go from mono to stereo. So in this particular case, I'll just play it with the thing in mono. If you're sitting between some speakers and you do some crazy things like this. So that's one way to separate, you know, um, this scrape in the middle of this track, check it out. I'll go back a little further so we can hear this section. To me, that's a little bit of ear candy and um, it's something I really like to use. This is one of the best plugins to do something like this. There is a small guitar solo in here, 
at the very end, and it's a pretty cool sound. This is what it sounds like. In the track. So one of my favorite, as you can tell, I'm a fan of simple plugins. Renaissance Axe is not only just a compressor, it's kind of an EQ at the same time for me. I mean, it adds bite as well. Check out what it's gonna do to this track. So with one plug-in with three simple sliders on it, I've already kind of compressed and EQ'd my solo to stick out of this track without reaching for a compressor and an EQ or just over EQing something. I mean, the one thing you have to think about mixing in general and sounds, like, sounds mask each other. So in this section of this song, there's vocals, there's heavy guitars, there's all kinds of craziness, some cymbals going on. That's all kind of high frequency information and by the normal instinct was I can't hear the solo and you push it up, you push it up and you still can't really make it all out and then you compress it. And then before you know it, you're adding high end to it and then you've got all these things that are in the same frequency range and they're all fighting. So sometimes it's just as easy to actually take some top end off and push it up. So I've set up this, you know, instead of the Renaissance Axe at this point, I'll just do a, a different example where I'm actually gonna EQ it but I'm not adding any top end, I'm pulling it off. I'm just gonna turn the solo up. And it's gonna kinda get it out of the range of all the things that are masking what it's doing. So almost counterintuitively, by darkening something, I'm making it stick out of the mix better because I'm taking it away from the other areas that are masking its frequencies. Mm -hmm. 